Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is a very quick chapter. Um, it's chapter four of CT1, and it's on real and money interest rates. And the base idea is that real interest rates allow for inflation, and monetary interest rates ignore the inflation effects. And a very quick, um, a quick little recap on inflation. Inflation is the whole, you know, what is my money worth? and it gives your money purchasing power. So let's say I've got an investment and it's going to make 10% um, in a year. In this one economic environment, so let's say this one country, and then I've got another um, investment that could make 8% um, in this area for, for one year. And they're both of the same risk. If we weren't considering inflation, and these are both monetary um, interest rates, we'd say that the first environment is a much better place to invest our money. But if we were told that the inflation in environment one is extremely volatile, it could be low or it could be very high, whereas environment two, the inflation is quite stable, then we have some thinking to do. Because inflation is its one of those interesting things that it has like a mind of its own. If we watch the, you know, the economic news, we see that people battle to predict inflation perfectly and the monetary bank tries to keep inflation within a set target. But every now and again, it breaks free and it, it wreaks havoc. If inflation is too low, it's very bad for the economy as it prevents um, growth from being stimulated because what happens then is people say, oh, my money is, is not deteriorating that quickly. I'm not um, rushed to make purchases, and purchases of goods and stuff stimulate the economy. If inflation is too high, um, then we have something, what's happening in Zimbabwe, where people just start buying a whole bunch of stuff and hoarding it, and then there's a big bump, and then nothing happens because everyone's already purchased their goods, and the shops have to close because... There's nothing on their shelves, and it, it just gets into a nasty situation. But inflation is at a good or at a reasonable amount. Then people, they're like, okay, my money's not going to be worth that much um, tomorrow, so let me make some purchases today. And with investing, inflation is, I want to say, a bad thing. Because if I invest um, some money and I get an interest rate of 10%, but inflation is 6%, then my real return is only going to be 4%. So you can see inflation reduces um, your monetary inflation effect. And when it reduces that, we then call that amount the real return. And I guess the main lesson of this chapter is, or well, the main lesson to, to take away, is that when people start quoting you how much um, this investment is going to give you, what the return is going to be, you want to make sure that they're quoting a real figure and not a monetary figure. So someone mustn't come to you and say, oh, invest in this, you're going to get 20% back. And that will that sounds great, but if inflation is like at 12%, then 8%, it's good. But if you're taking a big risk with this venture, then you need to think again. So that is just how, how I remember inflation. Um, I do recommend that you stick to whatever the textbook's definitions are. And remember, you can get a whole bunch of actuarial resources and um, notes and flashcards and past exam papers and all that type of fun stuff from the ActEd website. It's www.acted.co.uk. So check that out. Um, next chapter is on discounting and accumulating. And it's going to be, as you can see, much more mathematical than this chapter that we've just spoken about. But I hope you enjoyed this very short video. they just meant to be introductory um, and stimulate conversation around the topics. But yeah, give that little like button a click and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Cheers.